Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and I am coming to you today on a voice recording. So what I am going to be teaching you today will be helping you to understand how powerful your feet are. So welcome to your project. This is your project, the Strategic Grits Initiative, the Jesus Banner Project. I know you're very, very excited about using your Jesus Banner and being able to begin the process of stepping out witness to those that are around you in your, even in your own home as you believe for not only your uh, maybe a spouse, it could be a spouse, whether you're a man or a woman that I'm speaking with, it could be a spouse, it could be your children, it could be um, your neighbors, it could be those that you are in fellowship with, perhaps it could be those at, at your workplace, whatever it may be, the Lord wants you to begin in the place of posturing your feet. So I am going to teach you a little bit about that and I'm doing it. Uh, in an audio, um, it's, it's just something I feel like the Lord wants me to begin to uh, pour out is um, just giving you this in an audio way so that if you are in a um, car, you could just turn it on and listen. If you're in a place where maybe you're doing some housework, you could pop your earphones on and listen because this is going to be, it's not necessarily going to be long, but it's a little bit to uh, listen to and contemplate and aggregate into your soul. So I want you to get all the nutrients and all of the goodness, uh, pulling it out as much as you can. So I want you to get as much as you can. So I think visually and uh, Getting this is not as important as you hearing it, and you'll understand that more as I go forwards in this teaching. Hopefully, I'm not going to be interrupted by anyone, so I can stream this as, as uh, easily and smoothly as possible. hope this is not going to be broken up in two portions, but if it is, you'll receive the second portion. So I'm going to pray right now, and I'm um, believing for the Lord to begin to move on your family as we are getting this assignment, as the Ecclesia is beginning to step out in out of the four corners of the church. It's not that we are supposed to stay in the church, in the building, but we're stepping out because we are fitted, we are shot, and we can do the same thing in our own homes. We're beginning to be shot and prepared, so we're stepping out. Father, I thank you for those that are listening, that they will have a the mind of Christ renewed and their hearts would be solely committed to you. And it goes all the way down to their feet, their mind, their head, their heart and their chest, uh, their heart, which is the clay tablet, which you um, write on and then their feet, which causes them to be doers of the word, not just hearers. We thank you for it in Jesus name. So I'm going to start right now. Pro, uh, just teaching a little bit about what is a faithful hearer. So for those of you that um, have been saying yes, yes, as a bride, you'll get this because the bride wants us, uh, because as a bride, the Lord wants us to say a continual yes, not just yes once, but yes every single day. So this is, this is the way that we communicate to our bridegroom is we have a continual stream of yes or prayer. So that's what it is to pray continually. You're continually saying yes to your husband. So what is a faithful here? It's one that listens. So when you are a listener, you're actually full of light. You're an overcomer that produces what I call, what the word calls a doer. The word says that you're a doer if you are a listener. You're not just hearing, but you're listening. And if you're listening, you're a doer. And if you're a doer, you are light. And I'll give you a scripture reference, 1 James 1 and 25. Enter in with both feet. Yes, both feet. Enter in with light. 
enter both your heart and your soul. So it's both your heart and your soul together that the Lord wants to um, bring as one. But first he has to come down with his sword and divide even your soul from your spirit, the joint and marrow into the intents of the heart. So I'm going to explain that because the Lord wants to divide us, not to keep us separated, our spirit and soul, but to reunite us when he clarifies us. So first we're brides, we're doves, we're sons, and then we're friends. Or we're, we're brides that say yes, we're doves that say yes, we're sons that say yes, and we're friends that say yes. So first he comes to come up over our will. And not our will, but his will, or his sword, or his desire. Because the Lord has a desire that he wants to give our soul, because the desire of his soul is for us to have his will. So he wants to come over us with his light sword, or his rod. Dividing us between what our desires are, and his desires are. Clarifying us in the river of his love and the cleansing of his, uh, purifying of his fire and the cleansing of his water to bring sanctification to us and then to reunite us so that our soul and spirit has the same copy. Yes, the same, bearing the same testimony scroll. So when we are light, we know that this light is not stupid, but this light is smart. <laughs> this light bears intelligence. And this light is your love and joy and your peace. Have you often wondered what love, joy, and peace is? Well, your love, joy, and peace is your praise. It lights up your pathway. It lights up your mind. And it carries it to your heart. And then it escorts it to the courts of the Lord. Your feet are full of light because your mind is renewed. Your soul or your mind, your mind, will and emotions, then bear this light. This renewal of the word or this light, the rod that comes up over you, goes into even the joint, the tissue of your issue, the issues of your tissue. It goes into the joint and the marrow of the heart. First, your soul, your spirit and soul, then the joint and marrow, and then to the very intents of your heart. That's where the issues are born. We have issues with this and that, but the Lord goes down even beyond just the joint. He goes to the marrow, and the marrow is where the blood is found. The marrow is where the blood is found. There is a very interesting place that we can set and rest on just for a minute, talking about the blood. So this blood, as most of you know, is light. It is the DNA of God. His blood bears light. It's God's DNA. He fought for us to bear this. His love found you, and his love fights for you. His love continually finds you. His love continually fights for you. This is the justification that he won for you on the cross. This is what he does for us every single day and night and night and day. I'm continually justified in him because he continually fights and continually loves and we are continually found in him. He did that work once on the cross but his justification, like his light and his blood, continually works to get us into that place of the inner court where the holy of holies dwell. So he doesn't give up on you. Even when we fall, we mess up, he says, uh -uh, I'm never going to give up on my bride. This is where it comes into your feet. It says in scripture, I heard his feet walking in the garden. We are redeemed by that blood. His feet are continually, constantly bringing us a, a place where our feet are redeemed. I 
heard his feet walking in the garden. When we begin to hear and then listen, we go into the place of being a light being. God was light walking in the garden, but he was moving light. He was not only glory, but he was beauty. It's the priests that bore the glory and the beauty. They bore the voice and the movement. I heard his feet walking in the garden. It was a movement and it was a sound. And we're redeemed by his blood, which not only moves, but it bears a, a sound. Zephora redeemed Moses' feet. She could feel in her feet something was troubling in her spirit. And she began to intercede for him. She saved Moses and his people. Now I'm going to read to you a few scriptures that talks about feet. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to get how powerful your feet are and how you're going to begin to not only be in your home, in your neighborhood, in your city, and in the place where you live using your, these feet, but you're going to understand how powerful your feet are when you begin to walk out and begin to declare the Jesus Banner Project with your feet. First Thess Thessalonians 5 and 23, it says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify, set you apart to be made for holy use. And I declare your feet holy, your feet set apart for holy service. Sanctification is what God uses to bring about salvation or separation into the narrow place to hear the Lord speak. So he is taking his rod and revealing his narrow place because it's his rod or his word that comes up over us. And when we get into that narrow rod or that narrow word, we are becoming sanctified and ready for him to use us. And until we go through that separation, we're not ready. I declare your feet crushes and tramples down complacency. Romans 16, 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under his feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Your feet are jubilant and swift, marching on in no defeat. You're walking in the light of the living. Psalm 17, 5, my steps have clung to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I declare your feet bear the strategy of heaven, Luke 7, 44. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, Do, do you see this woman? I come into her house. Did you not give me any water for my feet? But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. See, she brought her head. Her renewal came. Because she took her head to his feet. So it's her declaration of her bringing her very mind to the one that could only transform her mind. She didn't take her head to her feet first, but she brought her head to his feet first at the footstool of Zion. We bend our knees and our feet bow down to the footstool of Zion. And we cap the mountains where we praise. What happens to us is when our renewal comes from him, what we pour out will be pure praise or pure light. I declare your feet initiate change for Samuel twenty two thirty four. God is my strong fortress. He makes my way. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and stations me upon the heights. I declare your feet bear the presence of his holy glory and holy beauty. Romans ten fifteen. And how can anyone preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those that bring good news. Not only are your feet bearing glory, but beauty. Not only are they bearing an authentic an original voice, but an authentic and original movement. When you dance, when you move 
you bear his glory and beauty. I declare your feet are broad, Psalms 31, 8 and 36. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, and that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. Psalms 1836, you provided a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. I declare your feet are strengthened, Acts 3 and 7. Taking him by the right hand, Peter helped him up, and at once the man's feet and ankles were strengthened. I declare your feet will return and find rest. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned to him in the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth, and he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her into him. You're not going to be aligned perfectly in his perfect will until you have learned to rest in his ark, the ark of his wing, until you move up into the downy breast of his love. And that verse was found in Genesis 8 and 9. Until we learn to get in the ark or the rest of his arm and then find our passageway to the downy breast or the feathers or the breast feathers or the heart of our father. That's where his flesh dwells. Will, will we really be truly sent out and prepared? Our feet aren't prepared until we find his fleshy heart. Your feet are hyacinth blooms your feet are perfumed by his love and everything that comes out of you is not at a distance but up close from your feet to your head from your head to your feet or i'll say this because he did he wants us to place our feet to our head but then he shows us that it's our uh feet that bear the pathway. It comes from our journey in Him. And when we are one together, our head and our feet come together as one. When our mind is renewed and we found the light in our mind and it goes, we our, our head goes to His feet. Do our feet become His feet? And when His feet become our feet, our light is on in our pathway in other words our mind is renewed and we are one together our feet and our head are one it's um solidarity you grow taller than anyone else in the room because you do because what you do is who you are you grow taller than anyone else in the room because what you do is who you are. Luke seven thirty seven. and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her, her tears and wipe them with her the head of her hair, her, the hair of her head, excuse me, and kissed his feet and anointed them with anointment. So she understood that it wasn't an act of uh, obligation, but it was the intimacy that she had born from all of the saving up of this ointment. When you save up your intimacy for a particular person, you have copious amounts. She had copious amounts of tears. She had copious amounts of ointment. She had copious amounts of oil. She was one that was found in abundance. And that abundance poured out. She was a keeper of her well. And when you're a keeper of your well, you are a poor, a poor one that pours to the nations because you have, are eating on the fleshy heart of the Father. You're eating on His light. You're feeding on His Word. You're eating and consuming His marrow and His blood. Your feet bring the lame to be healed. Matthew 15, 30. And great multitudes came unto Him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others cast them down at Jesus' feet, and He healed them. 
your feet listen to the word and doors open to be taught. Luke 10, 38, 39, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what she what he said but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made she came to him and asked Lord don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work myself tell her to help me Martha Martha the Lord answered you're worried and upset about many things but few things are needed or indeed only one Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken from her she has chosen my feet they bear the clear eyes of heaven, Exodus 24, 10, and they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and it was like the very heaven in its clarity. Your feet worship at his footstool and are strengthened and are swept up on bended knees to the mountain of the Lord. Psalms 132.7. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, your, to your resting place, you in the ark of your strength. That is his heart. Your feet stand in repentance to the nations. John 13.14. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. It's you going out. You're prepared. Your feet stand to his steps. Your feet stay, excuse me, to his steps and do not slip. Psalms thirty-seven, thirty-one. The law of the law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Your feet are guided by peace, Luke 179, to give light to them that sit in darkness and into the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Your feet bring good news, Nahum 115, behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bring good tidings, that publish peace, O Judah, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vows for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Your feet are on the enemy's neck, Joshua 10 and 24. When they had brought the kings to Joshua, he summoned all the men of Israel and said to the army commanders who had accompanied him, come here and put your feet on the neck of these kings. So the commanders came forth and put their feet on their necks. Your feet are humble and know how to open doors that, sh that are shut and shut doors that are open. Ruth 3, 4 through 8. When he lies down, note the place where he lies, then go in and uncover his feet and lie down and he will explain to you what you should do. First Samuel twenty five twenty four Abigail she fell at his feet and said my Lord may the blame be on me alone but please let your servant speak to you hear the words of your servant your feet bear a testimony don't leave anything behind Luke nine and five if anyone does not welcome you shake the dust off your feet when you leave that town as a testimony against them so they set out and went from village to village preaching the gospel and healing people everywhere Acts twenty seven seven suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the in the cell he struck Peter on the side and woke him up quick get up he said and the chains fell off Peter's wrist and an angel said to him put on your clothes and sandals and put and it's Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And the angel, that's what the angel told him. Put on your clothes and your sandals. Your feet are shod. Hey. The feet of the believer is perfumed by his love. And that's how your feet stand on the enemy's neck and defeats the enemy. Saying yes as a bride means you are partaking in divine communion and his blood. And I'm speaking to men and women. This is not a woman's ministry. The Strategic Grits Initiative, the Jesus Banner Project, is not a woman's ministry. Although women may flourish more in it because they're they tend to be more intimate but this is for the bride of christ which is men and women men don't understand as much as women how it is to be a bride women almost lead the way in the evangelistic network of the gospel of jesus christ but it doesn't mean that men have not done that women have a little bit more understanding of intimacy how to have to depend so the lord is showing us to be a bride is not a man or a woman,
but to be a bride means that we're moving in divine communion in him. We're moving in the dance of the Lord, the dance of his blood, which is light. So you first uh, understand that your feet are full of light. Your feet are full of righteousness, and he prepares that pathway for your feet to walk. You're not eating from the tree of uh, destruction, but the tree of life. The tree of life bears his blood. It bears his rod. It bears his light. You are blood. Uh, you are inside of his blood. You are inside of his light. You're inside of his word, his sword. And it comes down over you to continually, uh, constantly cleanse your blood. You, your, your blood is like the red and white uh, in the platelets, there's three types of blood, red and white platelets. So the white platelets drives out invaders. The red platelets breathes. It causes you to breathe. So he breathes on you. He constantly um, uh, oxygenates your bloodstream. His red blood cell, his red blood, his white blood drives out invaders and his platelets aggregates everything together. So there's a metamorphosis that's taking place as a virgin bride. As you as a virgin bride, there's a metamorphosis taking place. There's communion in your inner place taking place inside of you. Taking place inside of you. And he's leading the way. He's leading you in paths of righteousness. Matthew 4, 1 through 11, I won't read it, but he's separating you by his rod. There's nothing that we can do. It's, a, it's an act of solidarity on his part. It's an act of unity on his part. It's an act of God saying, mm, I've done it for you. It's a gift I'm giving you. You can't ask for it. I've already done it for you. All you do is say yes as a bride. Stand there and say yes continually all day long as a bride. The bride says yes, and the groom says yes. He's already said yes. He's already done it. He's already went before you. Hey, so we are learning to eat on his fleshy heart. His fleshy heart is his marrow, the marrow of his inner core, the marrow of the inner core of the Holy of Holies. In the Holy of Holies, there was light, and it was unlike any light on the earth. It was There was not a light on the earth at that time other than the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies was shown to uh, Moses, to the priests there, because it was to be shown that there is an inner core light that cannot be given unless we receive invitation by the Spirit. So he's inviting us to go through a process, a process of our old going into the new. And I know I'm talking to believers that are saved, that are filled with the Holy Ghost, that that, that have already gone through a lot of process. The Lord has taken you to intimacy, process, and purpose, and mandates. And those are all uh, something that if you haven't been taught about those four levels, those four places in the kingdom, those that he raises up the church and those places of, of intimacy, then process, and then he gives you your one purpose, and your one purpose is the same person purpose for everyone. Everyone has the same purpose. Everyone has to go through the same intimacy with the Lord. It it might look different, but his intimacy is getting inside of his heart. We all have to go there. We all go through different processes, but it's the same process. You have to allow the Lord to process you inside of his heart, but we only have one pour. We only have one purpose, and that is to pour our perfume on his feet. It's not our perfume, but it's his perfume, but it becomes our perfume. It's not our feet, but it's his feet. His feet become our feet. His perfume becomes our perfume. And when we pour his perfume out, everyone in the room is going to recognize that it's Jesus. It's not you. When you dance, when you wave your banners, when you lift up and wave any any type of uh, it, it could be a ribbon, it could be um, it could it could be your song, it could be an instrument, it could be your sound coming from your heart, it could be your preaching. People are going to recognize it's not coming from you. They're going to recognize that perfume is coming from another dominion. It's coming from another realm. If it's your perfume, it's going to fade. But when it's God's perfume, it latches on and it it, 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 it it attaches to the garment 
that people wear and they're going to wear it on their garment and they're going to smell it. They're going to, wow, that thing caught me. That thing absorbed into my very garment. I'm wearing it. It didn't dispel or it didn't fade away. It attaches his light, his blood cannot be washed away like the blood of your own flesh and blood in cold water you can wash the blood away but his blood cannot be washed away it's permanent you go through this process and this separation to receive mandates after you understand that you pour our purpose is to pour his perfume that becomes our perfume his perfume is poured out you receive your mandates to go into the nations. And this is what you're going to be receiving. Through this Strategic Roots Initiative, the Jesus Banner Project, you're going to be receiving out from this intimacy process, pouring your mandate to go preach the gospel to all nations. You are going to become the butter fat of the Lord because the milk goes into a process where it becomes butter fat. So you're going to Eat uh, the fleshy heart of the Father, and you're going to rise at, up as a butter fat bride. Yes, the Holy Spirit is going to work his paddle in your in your churn, and he's going to operate it. He's going to churn it until you become fully processed up, until you become butter fat, till you rise up, till you perfume up. And then when you go out, people are going to smell and know that's not coming from you. Job 21, 24, it says, bread full of milk, bones moistened with marrow. You're going to first become that milk of the Lord till you're processed, until you become the moistened marrow, the moistened marrow in the bones. That moistened marrow is his butter fat. Yes. Your scroll is going to be unfurled by his breath. When he breathes in you and churns you, when he breathes in you and he causes your very, your very, the very blood inside of you to be turned over, now it's his blood because it's his oxygen that you're breathing in and releasing. His very white blood cells, the white blood cells speak of driving out invaders, infection. It's gonna, you're going to be able to heal the sick. You're going to be able to raise the dead. You're going to be aggregated as one. Your soul and your spirit are going to become whole now. No longer are you going to be separated. He had to separate you to clarify you, but now you're becoming one because your whole soul, your whole spirit, soul, and body are whole. Separation for clarity, responsibility for stability. That stable part is you being walking out and mandated with feet that bear his light or bear his scroll. He's going to begin to unfurl you into the nations. And because of these platelets, he says, you're going to form a net. So the sticky part of the blood, it is there to act as a net to aggregate so that you won't bleed to death. We are going out in this project to create a net work of banners across the nations of the earth. You bearing light, me bearing light, our sisters and brothers that go out in Christendom, in the in the um, in the ecclesia, when we bear His light on our feet, we're actually bearing a net that captures the enemy and completely destroys him. You can almost see it as um, a dragnet that is cast out. You're catching fish, but you have to pull the fish in and you have to clean the fish. And then the fish are processed. This, it, you can even look at it as, think of a spider web. As you see a spider web, and what does she do every day? She creates a little net. And what does she capture in her net? She captures her food for the day. And when it's 
the net is destroyed, the little spider web thing, then she puts another one out and she captures her little tiny um, insect. Spider webs are made up of uh, ultraviolet light and insects cannot see ultraviolet light. So that's why they fly into it. And then she takes it and she, of course, eats and consumes whatever is caught in that net. Something too big, it'll fall out. Something uh, that's that, that flies in it that is just fitted for that net is going to be perfect for her to consume. When we are broadcasting out the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because the enemy, Satan, does not recognize who you are because he it would take him to be light to recognize light you catch your enemy in the light and that's how he is caught with his pants down he is caught and he's driven out that's how you're able to catch the enemy at his work because you come in as light and light dispels darkness what does that mean it means that you have caught the enemy where he's operating because you've walked in to a dark place. The light has come in. That's why light flies away as soon as it comes in because the enemy, the enemy is caught. He's trapped by the network of believers that God is going to create a net work of stompers a network of stompers s-t-o-m-p-e-r-s stompers a network of dancers a network of uh, light is going to be spread off out across the nations of the earth and it's going to catch enemy unaware he's going to be trapped because he's not going to see it coming you are a web you are a network of his blood that is going to be uh, connecting to each of us. I'm connected to you. You're connected to another person. Another person is connected to another, another to another. We're going to act as a like a web across, like a network across, a network like a the internet is like a it, it, line upon line. You have dots. You have dots. You have, um, I say, stars. Look at it like this. You have dots, you have stars, and you have raindrops. You have dots. Sometimes when people speak, when I'm in a service and I hear them speak, I go, oh, what they just said connected a dot. There's the dot. Sometimes when you have, when you say, we say stars, when stars connect upon stars to stars to stars, they form a constellation.